Hello, this is Michelle Anderson with Love Logical. I am here today speaking with Tom Adams of TJ Adams Staffing and the Chance for Life program. Today is very important to me because Tom Adams has been in my life since I was a young girl of 12 years old. So I am very proud to have him in my life. It has been many years. He started off as my, as my, a friend of my, father of my friends, and then he became my mentor. Then he became the love logical grandfather of my son, and now he's the love logical grandfather of my daughter, and he's my love logical dad. So I am very proud and honored to have Tom Adams in my life. Thank you. Thank you for coming and talking to me today. It's my honor. Tom Adams, um, just, just to give you a little history, I've watched this gentleman decide that he was going to become an entrepreneur. Um, started off in the basement, moved up to the dining room, <laughs> has moved into various offices um, here within the city of Detroit. I've watched you just so much. You and mom were my, you were my inspiration. Thank you. You know, taught me so much through the years. And I think that a lot of who I am is not just the result of Phyllis and Lonnie Hurd, but also the result of Tom and Jane Adams. Well, thank you so much. So thank, thank you. you. Um, could you, we're here today to talk about the Chance for Life program. And the Chance for Life program is, would you explain to everyone what the Chance for Life program is? Sure, I'd be glad to do so. Uh, before I do that, let me just say that we've also had an opportunity to watch you grow from a very intelligent, uh, before her time young lady, <laughs> into an extremely smart, dedicated and gifted woman. Thank you. Uh, so we appreciate you also. Thank you. But Chance for Life. Chance for Life is a transformational program. It's geared at starting off going into the prison institution and teaching people uh, how to think differently. When you, you can give a person anything that you want to. When a person returns home, you can give them jobs, you can give them housing, you can put money in their pocket, you can give them anything you want. Mm -hmm. But if you don't teach them how to think differently, then they commit the same offenses or they react the same way when they're put in the same circumstances. So what we do is we start in prison, we're in nine prisons, and we go in and we actually teach people how to rethink situations by using critical thinking, diversity, leadership skills, uh, how do you learn about yourself through our personal profiles, and who you are, and how you make decisions then putting you back in those situations where we can let you actually use the skills that you have mm -hmm. in order to be able to bring down violence in the institution. So today we're currently in nine institutions throughout the state. We have mediation centers and eight of those institutions. And we've been able to bring down negative incidents in each institution by over 40% by creating mediation centers where okay. inmates actually go in and solve their differences in a peaceful uh, perspective rather than using violence or negative incidents in order to do so. It's been extremely successful. Then when they come out of the prison, mm -hmm. uh, we take them, we have a remote site at the Third and Low Baptist Church where we have a Chance for Life a Wellness Center, okay. a Peace Center. And there, we can actually deal not only with inmates, but we can deal with their families. So we try to get to the root cause of problems. You know, many people just deal with the symptoms. Mm -hmm. We like to go back to the root causes. So if you're at risk or you're in an environment where it caused you to do the things that you did because of bad examples, you know, maybe your father or your mother were, was an alcoholic or on drugs or lacked the education to be able to provide for you or lack jobs or other motivations, you know, which stimulated you going into that arena. And a lot of this centered around abuse. Maybe you came out of an abusive environment. We go back and we try to heal that. And when we can heal that, we can also heal you at your present state. We not only make you a better person that can stay out of prison and function, but we stop the generationalness of people going the same route that you happen to have gone and making your mistake. Okay. When I, um, how long has Chance for Life program been around? I've been doing this now probably about 25 years, mm -hmm. along with uh, my partner, Jessica Taylor. Okay. And how many men have been a part of the Chance for Life program within the 25 years, and what is your success rate? Literally thousands of men have been in our program. In each prison, we train 
what we call a core group of individuals, which we train personally. Mm -hmm. Then that core group of individuals actually go out, will go out and train other men within the institution. Okay. So at any point in time in each of our institutions, we may have uh, two to three hundred people that we're physically training, but another two to three hundred people on the waiting list. So you figure if we were in an institution, say, for ten years or five years, mm -hmm. you can just multiply that number of people that we've trained that have gone through the program. Wow, so if there's someone who's interested in becoming a part of the Chance for Life program, how do they, how do they become a part of, how do you select your, your, your members or how do you select the people? Well, on the inside, it's purely voluntary. Okay. So we try to identify, first of all, we go in and we, t we, we want the tough people in the group. Mm -hmm. You know, we're not looking for the goody two shoes, we're looking for the gang leaders, we're looking for the people of major influence, all wow. different races, races, all different religions, uh, backgrounds, mm -hmm. even if you're, you, you're not a religious person, you don't believe, we, we're looking for you all. So, and we're looking for those people to come together, but on a voluntary basis because they want to change, mm -hmm. but they don't know how to change. And so then we take those individuals and we teach them how to work effectively with one another. Then they in turn use their influence with their own people that they interact with in order to make a change. So inside the prison, if you're in one of our nine prisons, mm -hmm. it's just a matter of making contact with the Chance for Life leader in that program, and they're usually very, very well known or going to administration and asking the administration to tell them that you'd like to be involved with Chance for Life, and they would access you. When you come to the outside, then you have the ability to be able to access directly through us. Okay. It's just a matter of uh, giving us a call, giving Chance for Life offices a call, and those Chance for Life offices uh, will in turn set you up with time to come down and talk to us, and then we can access you to the program. We have over $800 million worth of services oh, wow. that we can provide to individuals on the outside mm -hmm. through the Detroit Wayne County Mental Health Authority who provides our funding uh, for our external facility. Now, I was in, what, one thing that I found to be impressive with the Chance for Life program was um, you're taking some of the men from Chance for Life to the governor's dinner. Yes. Um, you're taking some of the men to the NAACP dinner. The fact that the men that I have encountered through the Chance for Life program, they're always dressed impeccably like yourself. They always have on nice suits, nice shirt, pants, tie, shoot, everything about them is put together and the way that they present themselves. And how, how, how are you a part of that, you know, as far as their grooming and everything is concerned? Because I just find that interesting that I've never seen a Chance for Life member who was not extremely well-groomed? Well, Jessica Taylor, I think, commented up very well by saying that the way we show our success mm -hmm. is how we duplicate ourselves and others. So it's not enough that we learn how to do and how to present and how to carry ourselves, but we have to now take that and we have to duplicate that in others that are less fortunate. You know, the scripture says that the only way that you can truly love God mm -hmm. is to love, to love your fellow man. And it doesn't matter how big a Bible you carry or how long you pray or how many days you spend in church. It's really about how you work and you uplift your fellow man. So our philosophy and chance for life is that there are no excuses. Okay. None whatsoever. You come out, you have to be competitive with anybody else who's going to look for a job. So the first thing we do with Chance of Life core men mm -hmm. is that when they come out, we suit and boot. Okay. You know, we're going to go out and we're going to buy them a suit, shirt, tie. Uh, we're going to buy them socks, shoes. We're going to make sure that they look just like I would. Okay. Or anybody else that's presenting themselves effectively in, in business. Uh, we have a relationship with companies uh, such as uh, Hot Sam's and others. Uh, St. Vincent de Paul that mm -hmm. assist us in doing those things as well as money just out of our own pocket. But we want to make sure that you look like everyone else and that you blend in. Then we teach you to speak appropriately. You know, that's the reason for organizations like Toastmasters. You need to be able to speak and carry yourself in the appropriate way that an employer wants to hire you. Mm -hmm. No excuses for being in prison. You know, I'm, I've been to prison, I've done my time, now I'm out here, but I'm competitive with everybody else. else. Yes. So this is what we try to exemplify in our Chance for Life men. Think right look right, speak appropriately, 
be competitive with everyone else, and you're going to be able to achieve what you need to achieve in life. It's impressive. Now, I have personally um, become a part of the Toastmasters organization where the Chance for Life men are present every month. Mm -hmm. And to watch them lead within Toastmasters, to watch them speak within Toastmasters, and just the overall presentation all together is, like I said, it's, it's impressive. You know, I look at this gentleman and the way you see him today, this is who he is every single day. And those of you who know me out there also know that I'm one to where I dress a certain way. It's very rare that you see me in a t-shirt and jeans. And that is because of this gentleman here. My son dresses the way that he does because of, of you, you know. Um, Tom Adams is, is love logical down to his core. And those of you who wonder, well, what does this have to do with love logical? Love logical is a part of your extended family as well. And talking to the men within the Chance for Life program, Tom Adams is their mentor, he's their inspiration, and for many of them who have not had a father figure in their life, he's become that love logical father to them. So, and they have become a part of his extended family because he lives and breathes Chance for Life. You are on the road how many days a week driving to the prisons yourself to meet and talk to these men? We go five to six nights a week. Mm -hmm. Five to six nights a week. We've been doing that for over 23 to 25 years. And it's not a, it's, it's not a chore. Mm -hmm. It's really a labor of love. Mm -hmm. You find that when you enjoy doing something, you establish relationships. Speaking from a love logical perspective, you know, when you take on a certain role with people, it's like you, know, you, can't, you can't just leave them to flounder. Mm -hmm. They expect to see you. And the way, if you want anybody to listen to you, the first thing you have to do is show them that you care about them. Yes. Show them that you love them. And part of caring and loving is presence. Mm -hmm. You have to be there. I mean, you, you can't be an absentee father. You can't be an absentee mother. You have to be there so that people just want to listen to you. They want to hear what you have to say. You know, they, they want to be able to lean on you. They want to be able to cry on your shoulders. So you have to do that. So when you're doing what we're doing, very important that you're you're consistent in what you're doing, regardless of how tired you make it. Mm -hmm. Keep in mind, tired but not weary, because we love and we enjoy what we do, and we truly have established family in all the individuals we do. You you have I've, I've witnessed it myself. So again, if you can tell people how they can, if they have family members. Who they would like to introduce to the, you know, to your program, or if if this gets to someone within the system, can you can you list the nine prisons where you are? Sure, sure. Let me do it by nights. Okay. Um, Monday nights. <laughs> Monday nights we go to Adrian Prison, Adrian, Michigan, which is called Gus Harrison. Uh, Tuesday nights we go to Macomb. Uh, prison. On Wednesday nights, we go to two. We go to the Ryan Road, which is now the reentry center. We also go to the Huron Valley Women's Facility. Mm -hmm. On Thursday nights, we go to the Lakeland Facility, uh, which is located in Coldwater, Michigan. And on Friday nights, uh, which was just last night, we split up and went to three prisons. We went to the Jackson Cooper Street Prison. We went to the Parnell Prison. And we went to the cotton facility last night. And then on Saturdays, we rotate and we go to the, the Muskegon prison up in Muskegon, Michigan. So that is our, our route. That's what we do. That's what we do every week, in addition to our, our eight to five job of running TJA staffing. But it's truly a love. When we don't go, we don't know what to do with ourselves. We miss. You know, we go rain, sleet, hell, snow. You know? I mean, <laughs> yes, you do. We go and and you go because it makes an impact on people. When it's a snowstorm outside and everybody else is closing down and people are saying don't get on the road and you show up, it does a wonderful thing for people on the inside. And it also shows them what commitment is all about. Trust. So if you're committed enough to be able to make that trip, mm -hmm. even in bad weather, then they are committed in changing their lives. And that's what it's all about, transformational change 
changing your life, changing who you are, changing how you think, and taking that and extending that to loving and caring for the people that are around you, starting with yourself, your own family, and your extended family, which is your community. It's, it's amazing. And it is very rare that you see the president and CEO of an organization out there himself driving, going somewhere in inclement weather to go and visit, but this man does that to the point to where some nights I'm calling to make sure that he is um, home, on his way home, and that he's safe. And I appreciate that. So I just, I'm, I'm impressed. I'm, I'm just totally impressed. And before we wrap up here, can you, can you say just something about T.J. Adams staffing? Because that's what I watch grow from its infancy to where it is today and where people can go to see what jobs you have available because all of your jobs are for the professional person. Sure. Sure, TJ staffing, uh, again, we've been in business for about 28 to 30 years in TJ staffing, and we're an executive, we're a retained search firm, which basically means corporations come to us, they pay us to go out and find people for them. And we've placed everything from uh, secretaries to presidents of corporations. Uh, some of our most outstanding searches have been, uh, we did the police chief of the city of Detroit, President of Henry Ford Health Systems, President of the Wellness Plan. Uh, we've done several city managers, Deputy Mayor Flint, City Manager for Hamtramck, City Manager for Lincoln Park, Chief of Police for Inkster. So we do positions like that. And in order to contact us, uh, if you're interested in looking for a position, it's area code 313-638-1396. And when you contact us, we can give you the appropriate website information that you can go to identify jobs that we have listed, or we can also tell you how to get to our office, and okay. we're located at uh, 650 Woodwood Avenue, Suite 2450. So you can feel free to come here. And that's also the way you can contact us for Chance for Life. Okay. Uh, and we can access you for information there. Okay, let's repeat the phone number again. Area code 313-638-1396. That's 313-638-1396. That's TJA staff. Okay. I want to thank you for today. And thank you. I know that it was a long interview for you, but I just, I can't tell you how much I love this man. Um, my father respected him. Um, God rest his soul. But my father knew that there was another father out there. <laughs> <laughs> but the things that was taught to me, uh, my parents very much so was was very prideful and of what he did and they they just my parents knew how much love there was between us so I just want to tell you thank you for everything that you have done in my life thank you for everything that you've done in Delon's life as well as what you are what you what you're doing and what you've done in Janelle's and there's not there's not enough words to say how much love there is for you and how you are truly a part of everything that Love Logical is and why Love Logical was created. Well, if I can just steal a couple moments yes. to say that I want to also thank you for not only being who you are, but for really propelling this whole Love Logical movement. It's long been a philosophy of mine is that we, particularly as men, mm -hmm have to extend ourselves to families outside of our own, to our immediate families. And it matters little whether or not you have a wife and kids of your own. There are many families out there that need the maleship or somebody just to be there, to be able to talk to, to be able to lean on, just to show presence of or to give that male guidance. So I encourage you in what you're doing. Thank you. And I encourage all the men that hear us to participate, to get involved. And that's what being a true man is all about. Not only taking care of yours, yes. but being able to extend yourself and to lend yourself to others. And I say to women, you know, don't, you know, don't be concerned and jealous about this particular aspect. Mm -hmm. Because if we as a community don't support each other and take care of all the children and all the widows or all the single yes. women within the community, 
then we're going to perish. And that's part of what our problem is today. So I commend you for what you're doing. Thank you. So as always with Love Logical, it's biological by nature, Love Logical by choice, and a part of one thing that's within our community that makes all of us connected through Love Logical is DNA not required. Thank you. Thank you.